So welcome everyone to our study abroad podcast series. So today we have Asta from UK, uh, who's from India, and we'll be knowing about her journey from India to UK. So welcome Asta to our podcast. Thank you so much, Vishal. Thank you so much. Yeah, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. So Asta, when was the very first time in your childhood or adulthood that you thought that uh, there is something called abroad studies that you can pursue? uh so basically uh, i used to think like studying abroad is something not a easy cup of tea and i i used to get very fascinated because i have seen people like the leaders in our india they have went outside like mahatma gandhi and so many other people and they went outside they did their education they came back and they brought a new perspective in the country so it it used to be a very amusing thing for me but i was not sure from where to contact or whom to contact because the people nearby me were not going out because it was just the chronological study order that they were following in india as you know that happens but uh, one of my cousin he went out to do his masters in cyber security from us texas university and from there i got to know how to like that paved a broader foundation for me to move ahead with this idea sure sure and this was in uh, which year like uh, your college days or school days uh he was uh, probably he went out when uh, i was in school because he's quite senior to me sure 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 and how many universities colleges did you apply to when you were thinking about study abroad applications uh like uh, what i did that i have uh, applied uh, universities a lot because uh, uh, the course that i wanted to do it was not there like in every country so there were two specific countries one was uk and another was canada and in canada you have only i had just selected four uh, colleges in ucl and some more other colleges and in uk i have limited set of uh, uh, like uh, universities which were providing my courses but they were more into a non technical side like not into it one not into technology but maybe more on the construction side because i guess a lot of project management thing needs to be done on the construction side like infrastructure projects so i wanted something which goes aligned with my it thing and i could delve into a more wider domain like along with the it i could learn about how the construction project is gone so i can just get my domain expand so that's how i like i applied around 15 to 20 applications in the like in the uk uh, and because it was like two courses mix one was in mim that is masters in management another was in project management and the last option was to do a mba Okay, okay so but only uk right like you didn't apply to any other country no uh, uh earlier i was chasing like um, in 2022 when uh, the co after the first covid wave i did got my offer from a couple of other university like from canadian universities along with the uk but i didn't go there so like it's like i have been filing applications since very long time and it's just that it was my uh, like um, i got the guidance from the people that i should take the experience and then go and somehow i just ended up not going joining the college or uni but uh, like like specifically when i was coming here this time i just focused on the uk because i thought i won't be going to the canada because uh, i don't think so the cold weather will be more suitable for me it was very harsh even in uk so yeah Sure, sure. So, and you got uh, like some offers, and you chose one of the university. How was that final decision? Of yeah, I got, I got, I got couple of offers, and I chose the University of Liverpool uh, specifically because of the modules that they are teaching. So that's how I ended up here. Yeah. Okay. Because Any it was really difficult for me uh, to choose, so I made sure that I went through all the modules, and on the basis of the module, I could. just align my goals and i was able to choose the uni and uh, coming to the scholarship i got the two scholarship one was the vice chancellor scholarship and other one was the uh, 
commonwealth scholarship because uh, we fall into a commonwealth country kings so i got those two and those two scholarships depend upon how well your cv is how well you are academically so i have already done a few courses from the university of cambridge while i was in my graduation i did that so and along with that i have all the like percentage from 10th 12th and in my graduation everything is all 85 above it's, it's a constant thing so that's how I landed up and 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 there are certain people in certain courses where you get the full scholarship as well. So for that, um, they have some more criteria and I guess those course fees are not as much high as ours because it our course was very demanding. So I guess they don't give the full scholarship like wave off. But yeah, there's some people who can even get the full scholarship wave off as well. Sure, sure. And like did you write any tests? management. No, yeah. uh, they didn't. I didn't uh, take any tests because um, I got the unconditional offer letter because uh, I studied in an ICCSE school. So it's an international board. So they waved off the IELTS for me. And so I just got the unconditional offer letter because it was the second time they were offering me the course. Yeah. Sure, sure. But you had to go through the statement of purpose and letter of recommendation submission? Yeah, everything. That is very important uh, uh, because your uh, recommendations, like I got my recommendations from my professors who were working in MNITs and uh, IITs because they were there in my college earlier and then they went uh, to MN, like IITs and, and MNITs because they've already studied their back. So I really got a good um, recommendations from the HODs department and the people who are working on a very high profile and who have worked with me closely and they know me so the recommendation works like this plays a very key role while you are uh, filing your application it makes you stand out because someone is vouching for your skills more than you say that you are capable of doing something so that's how it is sure sure and how did you book your accommodation uh, when you're coming here? I booked my accommodation through Amber Student because I filed my application through the consultancy. And um, through that consultancy, I was able to do this. It was a GB foundation. And through them, those people, they uh, con uh, like, like introduced me to the Amber Student and I booked my accommodation with everything they sorted me out like even the payments thing they did for me and then i just transfer them and everything went smooth so in this amber student accommodation uh, journey the there was any hiccups or it was all very very smooth and how was the process like could you throw some it, for me it was very smooth because i i was able to book my accommodation prior two months and um, i got it on a very good price and along with that uh they recommend you your uh, like uh, accommodation to the nearby uni, which is a student accommodation as well. And um, they tell you how much distance there, and uh, you can like you can ask them what all services they provide, what all services they don't provide, and uh, certain questions that you have in your mind and confusion. So they are quite uh, helpful in that, and they really help me. Yeah. Sure. 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 And uh, this accommodation service uh, you used and there was no like, uh, I mean, whatever you see in the picture and what you got ultimately was almost the same. There was no like surprises later. Uh, yeah, it was not not much surprise later. I, it was al almost the same. Yeah, obviously that is a 3D image that has been shown. So obviously I, can, I cannot expect that what I have seen that 3D image that will be there. But yeah, it was nearly everything was all the amenities were same. Like nothing was being faked there. So yeah. So this uh, accommodation booking is very similar to bookings.com and only for student accommodation, let's say. I mean, it has all those features exactly like filtering here and there if you have used it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Completely. And you know what... Uh, uh, I, I'll tell you, I didn't even do that. They gave me few certain options that these few accommodations are near to your walking area and you can choose it this, this much per week that amount will be there. 
and these all are amenities how these many people will live with you whatever so they have just given me a small three to four brackets for me and then i was able to decide in that three four because i knew okay this is a distance i want to live around my like place like my uni because i, I want to just walk i don't want to travel so that really helped me a lot because maybe uh like you know what if i'm there even if i'm seeing it from the google map it doesn't show the correct because in india we measure in kilometers but here we measure the distance in miles so it just creates a confusion sure 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 and what about your visa process what is it smooth enough or you had any hiccups oh uh, no my that? visa process was not smooth enough it it just it was a horrifying uh, a nightmare because uh, uh, i i filed my visa on my own i did all i filed all my application on and i think that everyone should do that because it, not everyone i guess so but yeah you should do that so there was one friend of mine he told me that he did his all the application and everything even filing application to the university as well and he did everything on his own and he guided me because my counselor was um, not very prompt in doing all these things and i was quite stressed because i wanted to make sure that uh, i want to file it right now because pound rates went down and because i need to pay my fees and all and then and there and then um, i did my i filed my application late in the night and make sure that while filing your applications that you have very clarity about what type of scholarship you have got because basis of the scholarship that you get your visa visa fees is also being waived off so you just need to pay a certain little amount just for the stamping thing that's it you don't have to pay the ihs fees and other medical no no you sorry um you have to pay the ihs fee that is the medical fees but not the visa whole visa fees it's just the stamping thing you need to pay it's a very small handful of amount like 1200 or 1500 something so it's very important because i didn't made the mistake so yeah yeah and which flight did you book for your coming here uh i booked i booked my flight on my own and i did the turkish airline to come from here so yeah and were you flying alone or you had some people with you uh i had i i did had some people with me who like i who we made a whatsapp group and we met through uh, facebook and then we made a big whatsapp group and then we came together so yeah i did have few people so finding this finding these people is easy or is it like for easy for everyone uh, i guess facebook is playing a major role in it and it is really very very helpful facebook page groups like these so i just um, started to find the groups link pages like uk liverpool something something and then i posted then uh, i met some but of my friend like who's now my classmate and then from there he added me to the group and that's how because uh, people in our university the indian state took an initiative that will create one whatsapp group for everyone where we can communicate so like while coming here to filing the visa process everything i was in communication with the people who went through and people were passing on their learnings and what all do's and don't so that really helped me a lot sure 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 and you took like delhi to istanbul and istanbul to london or what was the trajectory like uh so my flight was like uh, new delhi to istanbul and istanbul to manchester and from Man- manchester i did a cab to come to liverpool and how much time was it manchester to liverpool Manchester to Liverpool is a very short time span. It just takes around forty five minutes to reach. That's it. By okay. a cab, yeah. And you already had your accommodation booked, so you directly went to your accommodation. Yeah, right? I I had my accommodation book. I I I I spoke to one of my friend. Uh, see, I am coming late in the night, and um, the people were there in the reception. I got my keys, and I have to just after getting my keys, I just went to the accommodation. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. And once you settled here, uh, how many days after your classes started? Uh, like I came one week, like one week prior, like so. It's like, uh, like, like roughly around eight days. I came early, and then after eight days, my started 
classes started in a very full swing. But uh, before our classes started, we did had one full week of welcoming week. I guess that is very good and essential for you to get hands on on the basic thing that you'll be needing to use in the university. So yeah. Sure, sure. And what about your cooking cleaning uh, rituals? Were you used to it or you learned it here? I am used to it because I am uh, outside till my 12th standard. I'm in hostels only. And then after hostels, I was working alone. So it, I am very used to it. But uh, here it's very different than in, in from India. You still get some help. But here you don't have to. You have to manage everything like cooking, cleaning, and then uh, chopping, getting the groceries done. And that too in winters, you have to walk uh, and every. It's not easy. You cannot get the bus till the Tesco store or something. You have to walk. So, and then you have to walk with weights and everything. So, it's not easy. And uh, I I was able to manage things because uh, I had created the schedules that really helped me to manage things. And that's how I was, I'm still managing my stuff. Sure, sure, sure. And once you started your college, uh, the very first few days, what were the key differences in the way the education works, the way of teaching the education system itself, UK versus India? Uh, it's a massive difference, to be honest, I would say, because uh, in India, usually uh, the, the teachers or the professors, they come, they do interact. and uh, But in, in the classes are not pretty much big but it is big but not diversity is not there but when you come to uk or any other countries the diversity is there and then you need to find the inclusion in it that means you need to make sure that you feel included everyone in particular classes which comes from a different diversity and ethnicity and really difficult for the person who is delivering the classes so I feel like the professors, their perspective they have in their mind is really very different because in India, the teachers are expected to do 80% and 20% are by student, but here it's opposite. The teachers do just 20% and it's us who has to do the 80% because if you are not doing the pre-recorded lectures or the th reading materials that you are supposed to do, you will not understand a single bit of it in class. If you're not focusing, then it's very hard to pass through the assignments. It's very difficult. It's not easy as in India. You cannot mm -hmm. mug up things. So how was your assignment uh, process? Was it easy for you? Was it hard for you? How did you cope Earlier, up? Earlier, it wasn't easy because I, I wasn't able to understand what I am expected, what my professor is expecting from the assignments. And, and firstly, I used to be like, why am I doing this assignment? What what will I be able to learn from it? It's just a merely a document, but it's just not a merely a document. Once you start understanding that whatever you are being taught in class, you have to apply practically and you have to explain that how that things will actually work in a real life scenario with a proper case study. That means you need to do a lot of research and even if you're saying that an apple is red, you need to provide a proof. That, that, and you cannot copy and paste everything from here and there. So that creates a really massive difference between the studies. And, and it is very difficult. And along with the referencing that we do, that's the Harvard referencing that we do. So it's, it's difficult to, a little bit in initial days to understand that are we going right or not because we need to like uh, we Indian students do take the referencing classes as well that we are once we are sound we can do a proper assignments sure, sure. what about calling professors by their first names was it easy for you or not so easy yeah it was very easy because I worked in IT department so yeah it was very easy because it's an IT culture only so yeah it wasn't sure, a sure. big difference for me yeah, yeah, sure. What about uh, part-time jobs and internships that you did and how did you find that? Uh, oh, God, I have filed so many applications. I've, I have never been rejected so many times. Uh, uh, even for the part-times, I got rejected like um, 
can't even tell you i have like i can i if i can and just show you a mail i have thousand mails of where you can find me five to six hundred applications just for the rejection so uh i would say for the part time thing as soon as you land start applying for the part time job uh start uh, showcasing your skills make sure that um, whatever you have worked you need to show them properly and uh, along with that uh, there is lot more about how you present yourself so cv is very important that you tailor your cv for the part time as well as the full time and that can only be done when when you start applying from the very first day when the last day comes when you get the final job then you'll get your refined cv because you'll keep on changing the things and learning from the interviews people and do go back to the employer or someone and ask them why they did reject you that's a basic thing that people don't answer so easily but there are some who really give you the constructive things to work on yourself so yeah so did you use linkedin or job portal for most applications and how was your final uh, for the part time i was using the indeed i use indeed i uh, read total jobs and cv libraries and uh, then i went to the like like suppose make the event to the make the careers website and then i saw it at location and i applied it so yeah for and for the full time i am using linkedin uh, mostly because um, linkedin gives you the uh, like precise to be precise correct job openings and it is very up, much updated so for the full time i'm using linkedin and uh, even total jobs and breeds as well and sometimes indeed sure sure and uh, somebody recommended you these platforms like yeah, like uh, like your teacher or career yeah they are they are, yeah my uh, like my like seniors they recommended me and along with the, we have the career coaches in the university they do recommend you what where exactly you can and we also have the career phase so we go to career phase and then they tell you go to our website you can find whatever you find you can apply and that's how you get to know about the various things and there are other more uh, uh, platform as well bright networks and student circles so many things are there sure 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 so you are all uh, working as a sales consultant uh, recently right could you tell us about yeah. that job what are you doing there uh i am working there as a part time so i am working as a sales consultant so i just basically see uh what how is the sale is going for the store and uh, what kind of uh, what shoes are the best seller shoes what exactly we need to order uh how the placement of the like shoe or a panel thing need to be there so that the customers can get their eyes on the high demanding things and they're able to easily find it so yeah i'm doing all sort of things and then i handle the customer query as well till operations see if the tills are working properly and uh, we need trainings of the staff what exactly we need what equipments we need what uh, electronic items we need to work for functionally so yeah i'm doing all these things Sure. So when once you joined uh, the college, uh, did you see the demographics of people from like all over the world, and did you prefer that you know you will mix with some ethnicity and avoid the others or something like that, or you just mixed with whoever came in the flow? Uh, I just mixed with whoever came in the flow. I was not worried that I won't be able to gel with them. because i was open to everything i was open to adapt any change and that's my skill set adaptability is very important and i don't think so this uh, if i'll say that i won't talk to this particular ethnicity or won't do this kind of work then i won't survive here abroad makes you humble that's the simple line i can just say that and what about the weather did it also make you a bit more humble uh weather weather i'm i'm from the north part of india and i have traveled a lot and um, in north part of the india it's like 
it's horrifying with with a condition but it's bit here dif uh, different and i feel like uh, once it gets little bit more dark easily then it is little bit depressing because it's two in the afternoon it just gets dark uh and then uh, you won't be able to see the sun like around 20 20 days like this straight and it's raining as well snowing so it does make you but uh, you have to manage your things and then then there comes the part where you have to work on your mental health you can just put the lights fairy lights because the christmas scene is there you get the lights you need to decorate you should decorate your places where you are sitting working uh, and there's a lot of get togethers happen when you can meet people and that happens in a closed space so yeah i guess that doesn't matter as long as you are just walking on the street or just a little bit traveling uh then only it's a big issue not much i guess so sure, it just sure. depend you have to manage you can't do anything about that yeah and what are your future goals for the next few years uh, I really do want to work as a delivery manager, like uh, down the lane. So I'm just focusing on to get a uh, like proper full time job as an IT project manager, and then head over to a delivery manager. Sure, sure. Coming to the very last question now, Asta. So, what advice would you give to younger yourself, uh, the aspirants back in India or anywhere else who want to study? Who are coming to abroad? Yeah. So I would say uh, take experience before you come here. Uh, make sure that uh, if you think that you can really, really want this and you really want, you can just stick to the plans that you have thought in your mind and you are able to execute it, then only come. Because the life here is not a fairy tale. Because it seems so good that, oh, I'm sitting at the broad and, um, oh, you are there. But here the scene is very different. So it's the other way around the, how the people portray it. So I would say it's not bad here. It's just that the things get stiffer and everything is not easy over here. You need to work hard, really hard to get through the things. Even a single thing that you achieve here. And along with that, the way we are used to live in uh, India, back in India, and the way we are living here is quite a massive difference because you are very independent. So I feel like I have, I, I was thinking that back in India, I'm independent. No, I wasn't. Now I can say that now I am completely independent because uh, when you come out of the house and you come to the UK or any other broad country, then actually the main thing that is stressed is how much you are inclined towards your goal to achieve. So I would only say that make sure that you take a proper relevant experience, you work on yourself, do fill up all the gaps, make sure you have right skill set and work on your communication skill, work on yourself that pulls you down and don't be afraid that job is not there or this is bad come and try give it a try you never know what will work for you what will not so some days you'll you'll be very glad that you take took the step to come out of your comfort zone and some day you'll regret it so it will you'll you'll see the both side of it and i feel that in that midway you will be able to find your path so yeah sure sure what about linkedin recommendation for the youngsters like school student college student should they have an account? Uh, very, yeah, I, I guess so. It's very important to maintain your LinkedIn account. And uh, if you can do it after your school, it's like once you start your college, you should do that. When you're in school, it's fine. If you want to do that, it's very good. Like it will create a huge impact because I guess it will make you stand from the other people. But I feel like LinkedIn is more of a working professional platform. So if you're not there in school, it's fine. But once you start your college, you should be very active on the LinkedIn. You should make sure that your profile speaks for you. So like you, it's like it should tells you the basic thing. And then the other person should 
get curious about you and should come to you and ask, hey, can I have your CV so that I can just know what exactly you are doing it. So I guess LinkedIn reviews, uh, LinkedIn recommendations are really important. Sorry about that. So LinkedIn recommendations are very important because it did play a major role in me getting my internships or my work. Yeah. Sure, sure. Thank you, Asta, for your time and sharing all these insights on uh, the UK and the job market, etc. So have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye.